Okay, you got to put on uh, This is my attempt at a video response while walking home because this is really the only time I can do this. So, yes, you posted an interesting link um, on a psychology dedicated site about uh, there's an affirmation by someone who appeared to be either Japanese or a UK person talking about how we all share humans only share one culture. And reading the way that they explained that and justified that point, I kind of understand the point that they're getting at, which is that humans, at the most basic levels, we have the same needs. And he's talking about how things like, you know, we have different types of needs, but in the end of the day, they're all meats or they're all animals, or, you know, we have basic, humans have basic common things that we need, and that, that's what links us all, that's what makes us all the same, and all the same culture. Um, and of course, if you want to get into this on an academic level, one, I'm not a psychologist, I don't know anything about this stuff, I don't pretend to be, and I guess it comes down partly to how you define culture, what level you take it at. But the analogy that I would like to use when talking about this um, is the one where I used to do programming, for example, as a job, and I remember one thing about that, well, one of the first things that you learn when you learn programming is uh, architecture. There are different levels and layers of programming. And I think this is very true of humans and language and culture as well. You have the basic machine level, the COBOL, the 010101s that are built into the hardware at the most basic level. And I think these are genuinely what all humans sort of share. This is what babies, you know, anywhere have. And it's the basic human needs and desires to, uh, you know, to eat, sleep and uh, eventually to screw. I think those, those things are common, and uh, measured at that level, hu all humans are basically the same regardless of language and culture. I think the level above that, the bios, if you will, I feel is uh, emotional, humans' emotional reactions. And again, this is kind of thinking again, I mean, I've got a baby right now, so this is kind of how what I'm seeing, how babies will react emotionally, just like humans will react emotionally to certain things, and we feel certain emotions. We feel happiness, we feel joy, we feel anger. And again, uh, I think you can say these are fairly common throughout humankind, although this is, I think, the first level at which culture begins to separate. Um, again, uh, it's funny, if you, when you come from different countries, you can see how culture raises, raises us to control and express our emotions differently. In my own case, the best examples I can think of was when I went to Romania many, many years ago. And I was in, every day I was in situations where I thought people were going to start fighting. And uh, everyone would just calm down all of a sudden and be happy. But people don't control their... <laughs> or it's okay to be more out with your emotions in some countries than others. So of course you come to Japan, Japan's, you know, is at the far end of the scale in terms of uh, suppression of those kinds of impulses. So this is that. And then I think the level above that is when you have basic words and linguistic uh, interaction. And, and this is where culture really starts to come into it. And this again, I think, when you have cultures with common geogra geographic and historical links, like you do with European languages, like for example French and Spanish to English, it's true that many concepts uh, do translate directly. The words exchange, you know, the, you are simply saying the same things in a different language. But uh, I think the further you differentiate geographically, and the more that you're building on established separate cultures over hundreds and thousands of years, the more that you see this reflected in the linguistics of basic concepts and basic psychology, that you start to become familiar with the fact that uh, although we're all the same humans, we're thinking in fundamentally different ways about the same things. And this is certainly something I've done, learning Japanese as an adult. Um, the most basic example I can think of is the process of asking someone for something. Uh, as you know, in English, the conversation when you ask something is, uh, I might ask my friend, can you please pick those up for me on the way home tomorrow? And they'll say, sure, and I'll say, thank you. I'm saying thank you because I've made a request of them and they've agreed to take on the burden of doing this task for me. So I express my thanks for that. And as you know, uh, in Japanese, the same conversation said in English goes, uh, could you please do this for me tomorrow? Sure. Please. Please do this for me. Uh, you never say thank you before the task is done. 
uh, you're not saying thank you for them taking on the obligation. You, you're reiterating the request in a very polite and specialized way. But that's just how Japanese culture does this. Um, the thought process of making a request is fundamentally the time when it's okay to say thank you, and the process of the thought process of asking someone to do something. Some of the most fundamental things that you learn from when you very first start talking is completely different, and things just branch off totally differently from there. Um, there are so many concepts in Japanese, which, for example, we express as verbs in English, which aren't verbs in Japanese. <laughs> uh, you even get this with European languages. Um, you know, like uh, I like, of course, uh, I like this is a verb in English. In Japanese, it's skides, it is like, and of course, in Spanish, it's a mi me gusta. It is pleasing to me, it's expressed in the passive. Um, these are, again, it's a similar concept of, of the most fundamental, basic, hardwired processes of our languages, which are different in different uh, cultural contexts. And this is the thing for me as someone who's bilingual, uh, and I'm sure you'll get this as well. Um, I am, I feel almost schizophrenic at times because I think in a completely different way whenever I'm thinking in Japanese. I mean, I've learned now I switch back and forth a lot more easily because I use both languages every day. But when, as I was for many years, I was using Japanese and only Japanese pretty much at work and at home every day for years, when I would switch back to English and my brain would still be going in Japanese, I became very aware of the fact that I was, my thought process was totally different. For example, uh, the way that Japanese, as a conversation, you, in English we often contradict each other, making small talk, making a conversation. Whereas in Japanese, you know, being contrary to someone as a way of discussion, you shut down the whole argument. You know, you, you talk by agreeing and kind of building a consensus kind of a, a, a structure. Again, the whole mental process about going through something as simple as a discussion is so completely different. This is why, yes, we're all the same animals and yes, we all have all the same sort of basic needs, but this is where, for example, when you get a Nikkei Japanese person, someone who's maybe grown up in the States or New Zealand, it's a Japanese name and pure Japanese, you know, DNA, um, it doesn't mean that they're Japanese at all. They're going to come to Japan and they're going to be quite freaked out <laughs> by what's going on uh, and just the different thinking about everything. Um, it's a tendency I think we have from colonial countries, which are very cosmopolitan. We, we bring together people from different countries that we think, hey, look, he's, he's Italian, you know, he's Chinese, he's African. We're all the same. And yeah, I mean, of course, we're the same. We have the same rights and the same, you know, we're, we're the same sort of people, of course. But, uh, you know, it's because we've, adop we've adopted this colonial culture, which uh, acts as a bridge between, for all these people to have a common culture between each other. But, you know, if you go to Africa or India or China, um, you know, to say that they're all the same culture, uh, yes, if you define culture at a basic machine coding level of humanity, or a newborn baby level, sure, 